Thank you for joining me on this adventure. Your presence means the world to me. Welcome aboard, as we set sail on a journey through Dianish Hunin. Dianish Hunin is a Latvian-born American multidisciplinary artist. She is known for her work in drawing, sculpture, installation, performance, video, sound, and hand-drawn pencil animation. Her work explores non-traditional ideas of drawing through sculptural and time-based processes. Without wasting any more time, let's jump into the fascinating world of early life and education. Diana Shbunin was born in Riga, Latvia under Soviet rule. As a child she emigrated with her family to the United States, where they settled in New York City. Shbunin earned an MFA from the School of Visual Arts in New York and has taught and lectured at multiple institutions. She is currently an assistant professor at Parsons School of Design. Get ready for an exciting exploration as we unravel the mysteries of early collaboration. Through the early years, Spungen engaged in a collaborative practice creating stylized, performative videos and installations that explored themes like the intimacy of friendship. With the foundation laid, let's embark on a journey into themes and concepts. Shunin's work often deals with themes of memory, longing, loss, and empathy. Influenced by artists like Felix Gonzalez Torres, Shunin uses deeply personal motifs and narratives in her drawings, sculptures, and video works, often combined with found objects to emphasize a concept that she refers to as object empathy. In her smaller sculptures and larger installations, Spungen explores objects and architecture to emphasize contrasting themes such as domestic and communal, light and dark, or interior and exterior. In this section, we'll be exploring materiality. The use of graphite is a foundational element to Spungen's work. In addition to drawings and hand-drawn animations, much of her sculptural work involves coating objects and spaces in an all-consuming layer of graphite. Writer Megan Garwood referred to this as a penumbra, a motif of light and dark. Let's now turn our attention to drawing of a house triptych and examine its role within the larger context. Drawing of a house triptych In 2015, Shungin partnered with Sightlub for an installation in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Shungin chose an abandoned rectory, slated for redevelopment, and covered it in graphite by hand, employing the help of over 100 participants. She drew nine hand-drawn animations that were rear screen projected onto and out of the house's windows. The project was both an aesthetic and historical evocation of collective memory. Curator Karin Coleman wrote, Diana Shungin's drawing of a house triptych has reanimated a vacant house into a living space once again. Covering the entire facade in graphite and projecting animations out of the windows, 333 Rumsey Street has become a transformative space that exists within a series of paradoxes, domestic and communal, drawing and sculptural, light and dark, interior and exterior. These opposing characteristics are not an aggressive disjuncture but perfectly coexist. Spungen takes the political and, in this case, spiritual implications associated with 333 Rumsey Street on board to create a multimedia art object that doesn't seal itself off from the audience or acquire an entirely separate existence but, rather, establishes a bonding relationship between viewer and object. As we enter this new phase, let's uncover the impact of Untitled Portrait of Dad on our broader topic. Untitled Portrait of Dad In 2011 Shamin showed her first solo work in New York after the end of a nearly decade-long collaboration. The exhibition included over a hundred drawings, hand-drawn animations, and sculptural scenarios including one ton of potatoes for the public to take, a reference to the Flix Gonzalez Torres piece from which the show took its name. The exhibition exemplified Shungin's primary use of graphite through the process of methodically hand-coating objects with the material. Such sculptures include a broken chair in a fixed space reserved for the haunting and a dead citrus sapling complete with fallen leaves in I Especially Love You When You Are Sleeping Both 2011. Art critic Jerry Saltz said of Shungin's work in a review in New York magazine, Once upon the millennia, art was used to mourn and also usher the deceased into the afterlife. 
in untitled portrait of dad Diana Schumann delves into the emotions and aesthetics of loss. We see beautiful hand-drawn animations here, one of her father in his casket, another of the world as seen from his grave. A broken chair references an odd family superstition. Nearby, we see a small mountain of spuds for the taking, to be put in bags marked with her father's handwritten potato recipe. It's a moving and poetic experience, and touches on the more mystical things art can still do. Get ready to immerse yourself in the world of bright light darkest shadow as we examine its impact and relevance. In early 2020, Schwangen had a solo exhibition at the Museum of Contemporary Art, Tucson, titled Bright Light Darkest Shadow. The show compiled nearly a decade of work, primarily hand-drawn animations. Seventeen animations, as well as source drawings for them, were shown along with animations from drawing of a house triptych. Three additional video works were shown in a separate gallery, and two entirely new works were projected onto large sheets of drawing paper. Spanning multiple years, Sosh Amin explore recurring themes in the oeuvre such as memory, family, and loss, as well as showed her continuing exploration of the nature of drawing as a medium. In the next segment, we'll be exploring drawing for a reliquary and its implications for our subject matter. In 2021, Shamin collaborated with Paul Amento of Sightlab on an outdoor sculpture commissioned by Frankenia Sculpture Park in Minneapolis, Minnesota. The work, titled Drawing for a Reliquary, is a large-scale mixed-media installation made of various salvaged components and two fabricated steel truss structures, with every surface hand-drawn over with graphite pencil. The surface treatment summoned involvement from dozens of participants, allowing for the communal mark-making to be both a part of the work's present history and as an offering to the past. The adaptive nature of the work reacts specifically to objects relics found on site in the sculpture park. From the three upright lifeless trees rescued from being burned in a bonfire, to the fallen 40-foot dead tree discovered in the woods, to the monumental 40-foot steel beam buried in a pile of metal at the park. Drawing for a reliquary is framed by the park's backdrop and offers numerous views lining up the sculpture's sight lines with the distant horizons. The saw cut in the massive laid tree and end of the I-beam are encrusted in silver leaf as a way to elevate them, memorialize them and to denote empathy for one another. The addition of a selection of salvaged boulders acts as a defining ritual-like framework and as a place to sit and contemplate. Get ready for a thought-provoking discussion as we delve into Always Begin at the End and its impact on our understanding. At the start of 2022, Shamin had a solo exhibition at Smack Mellon in Brooklyn. The exhibition centered around a marble-tiled arena covering a significant portion of Smack Mellon's 4,000-square-foot main gallery floor. The exhibition's title always begin at the end, and its acronym ABATE signal to the way that time can loop, how stories can start in unexpected places, and how a journey's end might be less than its imagined start. A chandelier, a record player, seashells, chairs, chain-link fencing, cast body parts, doors, cardboard boxes, a reconfigured American flag, and loose change add to the range of objects that Spungen installed throughout the space. This exhibition features many objects made from cast paper, alongside combined found objects that the artist alters, construction materials and a single hand-drawn pencil animation metaphorically smashed by rocks. Much of Shpunin's works can be seen as drawings in the sense that they are literally covered in drawing's most ubiquitous medium, graphite pencil. Shpunin painstakingly covers each object but does not obscure it, in a self-reflexive process that results in works which construct, change, and question themselves through the process of their own creation. Upon the exhibition's closing, Diana Schumann and Smack Mellon published an accompanying catalogue, also titled Always Begin at the End. In addition to documenting the artwork, the publication features multiple writings on the content of the show, an introduction by curator Rachel Vera Steinberg, an essay by critic and philosopher Dala Midden, an interview between Schumann and curator Gabriel de Guzman, and a work of poetry by the artist herself. In Miggins' essay, 
to make bare the shadow on Diana Shpunyan's always begin at the end. She writes, the objects that comprise a BATE performatively rehearse the contradictions between the unstoppable march of time and our capacity to reorient the arrangements of life from whatever remains available for ongoing manipulation. Reeling in or spinning out from various failures of so-called progress, this teetering between urgent criticism and slowed-down contemplation is felt in Spungin's buoying acts of repetition. The book was designed by Spungin and designer Grant Carmichael in a way such that it can be read from front to back or vice versa, keeping true to the theme and title of the show itself. Get ready to immerse yourself in the world of day for night as we examine its impact and relevance. In conjunction with Always Begin at the End, a performance was held on February 3, 2022. Titled Day for Night, it incorporated a hybrid of experimental dance and ballet, choreographed by Shungin in collaboration with classity trained ballet dancer Tatioma Nuez, who performs the piece. An original experimental score by renowned musician Mick Rossi of the Philip Glass Ensemble accompanies the performance, into which he incorporated Shpunyan's own amateur out-of-tune playing on her childhood piano shipped from Riga, Latvia. Day for Night also features costume design by renowned NYC fashion and costume designer David Quinn, who used the sculptural work from ABETE as inspiration. The title Day for Night, which is also the title of the score, references the eponymous 1973 film by Franois Truffaut who famously used a filter on the camera lens to turn footage shot during the daytime into night scenes. With that being said, let's now move on to exhibitions and press. Spungen has exhibited extensively in both national and international venues including the Bronx Museum of Art in Bronx, NY, Sculpture Center in Long Island City, NY, the Base Museum of Art in Miami, FL, Locust Projects in Miami, FL, Frankenia Sculpture Park in Minneapolis, MN, the Futura Center for Contemporary Art in Prague, Czech Republic, Tomiokuyama Gallery in Tokyo, Japan, the Carousel du Louvre in Paris, France, Invisible Exports in New York, NY, Stefan Stoyanov Gallery in New York, NY, the Mark Strauss Gallery in New York, NY, the Brooklyn Museum of Art in Brooklyn, NY, Sightlab in Grand Rapids, MI, the Aldridge Contemporary Art Museum in Ridgefield, CT, and Smack Mellon in Brooklyn, NY. Her work has been reviewed in publications such as Art Forum, Flash Art, New York Magazine, Art in America, The New York Times, Time Out London, and Le Monde among others. Her work was the subject of an episode of Tis Art Assignment, Object Empathy and was cited in the introduction of Jerry Sils's book Seeing Out Louder. Let's now turn our attention to accolades and examine its role within a larger context. Spungen was awarded the Poet Krasner Foundation grant and the 2017 New York Foundation for the Arts Fellowship in Sculpture and has been the recipient of awards, fellowships, and residencies with McGowell, Art Omi, C.C. Ortslink, Du Dunn, the Lower Manhattan Cultural Council, the L.A. Art and Law, Bronx Museum AIM Program, Gutenberg Arts, Islip Carriage House. I hope you learned something new today. Let me know what you found most interesting in the comments below.